we stand for the reading of the word. We will be coming from Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. And uh, we are continuing through our Roman series. So we're going to be in Romans for quite a while. So um, yeah, we're going to go verse by verse. We're going to get through this whole book if the Lord be willing. Yes. Um, all right. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Amen. You all may be seated. Uh, the title of our message, as I said, is The Power of Good News. Amen. The Power of Good News. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, First, I want to explain that last line of the 17th verse. For it is written, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And I want to explain that first because I want to get that out of the way. The just shall live by faith. What that means is none of us who believe in Jesus Christ are just. None of us who believe in Jesus Christ is righteous. No, not one. However, we are just because our faith is in the just Christ. We are righteous because our faith is in the righteous Christ. So then when God looks at the believer in judgment, he sees nothing but pure holiness, righteousness, a church without what? Spot or blemish. This does not mean a church without mistakes. This does not mean a church without fault. This means a church who is rooted and grounded and encapsulated in the blood covering of Jesus Christ. So therefore, the just, those who believe in Jesus Christ, will live by faith. Amen. The just shall live by faith. We are just because of our faith in the just Christ, who is just and the justifier. Come on. Come on. He is just and he makes us just. But we have no just, no justice, no righteousness on our own. Amen. Only in Christ. That's why you see the whole theme of the Bible. Everything is what? In Christ you are this. In Christ you are more than conquerors. In Christ you are overcomers. In Christ, in Christ, by yourself. You can do what? No. Nothing. Come on now. But with God, all things are possible. Yes. To who? Yes. Them that believe. Yes. Amen. There were four priests. How many? Four. Four, four priests. They they uh they met up at Church is chicken to hang out, right? Anybody, does anybody remember, does anybody remember my, my, my uh, slogan for church is chicken? Anybody remember? Bring the biscuits, baby. Church is chicken got some good biscuits. And they put that honey, butter, whatever on top of it. Yeah, she jumped right on. There were four priests who met up at churches, chicken, of all places, to hang out. And one of the priests, one of the priests said, Bring the biscuit. No, he said bring the biscuit. I'm sure they had the biscuit. But he says, you know what? Our congregations, our parishioners, our church folk always come to us Telling us all their problems. Come on. Telling us what's going on with them. Um, telling us their sob stories. Their uh, uh, pouring their hearts out to us. We don't 
don't have nobody to talk to. Who do we tell it to? We can't tell it to them because they're coming to us. So it's four of us here. Why don't we share this table together? Why don't we share our, you know, our, our burdens with each other? Let us talk about what we do. Let us talk about our secrets. Let us talk about our hidden faults between each other so it'll stay between us. So you know what? I think that's a good idea. I see the sense in it. I think that's wise. So this first uh, priest said, okay, y'all go ahead. So priest number two says, his hidden secret was he liked to drink. Okay. Okay, that ain't too bad. So priest number three said, hey, I like to smoke. You know, I can't tell my, my, my people that, but I, that's what I like to do. Then priest number four says his hidden thing was he liked to gamble. That was his, that was his sin. That was his thing. That was his vice, right? That's what he liked to do. And so that first priest who said, hey, let's, let's tell all our secrets, they noticed that he didn't say anything. And they said, uh, KJ will wake up on this one. They say, oh, um, well, you know, we noticed you ain't told us your secret. He likes to drink. He likes to smoke. He gambles. Well, what, what's your sin? And uh, that, that first priest that brought up the whole thing said, no, nah, I don't think I want to tell it. He said, come on, come on. We done told ours, you got to tell yours. So he said, okay, okay, okay. You guys have put your thumb on me. You guys have put me, put my back against the wall. I'm going to tell you what my sin is, what my vice is. And they waited, oh. just like y'all waited. <laughs> and guess what he said? He said, my vice is, I like the gossip. I cannot wait until I get out of here so I can tell everybody what Chuck just told me.
Did y'all ever think that y'all would see these babies testifying? On, Did y'all ever think that y'all would see them pouring their hearts out before mm -hmm. God? Mm -hmm. Guess what? When you read Mother Fred's book, mm -hmm. you will see that it took a powerful gospel to save her. When you hear Sister Davy testify just like she did today, it took what? A powerful gospel to save her. When you hear uh, Deacon Alvin testify, you understand that it took a powerful gospel yes. to save him. When you see that man sitting right there in the back of that church, it's going to take a powerful gospel to save him. Yes. And then you see this little fat boy holding his microphone. Come on, baby. Won't think about preaching. Ran up and down the roads and did everything I was big and bad enough to do. It took a powerful gospel to save me. Yes, you had to lose it all. A wretch like me. Yes. A filthy, nasty, immoral human being like me. Thank you, Jesus. But I'm not the nasty, immoral human being anymore because I have been born again. Yes. Yes. By a what? Powerful gospel. 